What if I told you that there was a person who lived almost their entire life totally normally, essentially without a brain? Or that there are documented cases of people incurring brain injuries that actually resulted in them becoming smarter, developing the capabilities of a genius? Your brain is the most complex thing in the universe and the most important organ in your body, according to your brain anyway suspicious that. It is the organ that named itself, the nexus of our being. A full understanding of the brain would conceivably mean a full understanding of life, consciousness, and perhaps even the workings of the universe and everything in between. Though my bet is on that answer being 42, of course. 42? So how do we study the brain? Unfortunately, neuroscience, neuropsychology and neurology possess some unique challenges compared with other sciences. The brain is extremely delicate and while brain scans, CTs, MRI scans, etc. can showcase activity in a conscious person, it's very difficult to understand how this directly relates to the conscious experience or intelligence. And while it's true that we can learn a lot from dissecting a brain, it's not immediately obvious which areas of the brain are responsible for different functions. So if cutting up brains doesn't help us much, how can we effectively study them? The answer, patients with brain damage. Some of the best data in neuroscience comes from looking at patients who survive brain injuries and examining how their personalities and lives change afterwards. This gives us an extraordinary before and after experiment which would be unethical to say the least if intentionally performed. This brings us to the case of Phineas Gage, which sounds like it should be a Sherlock Holmes story now that I think about it. This is an extraordinary case. Phineas Gage is neuroscience's most famous patient. He was born in 1823 in America and worked as a construction foreman until the age of 25 when the accident happened. He was working with explosives alongside some other foremen to do some demolition work to remove some of the outcrop of rock that was in some of the way of the railroad construction. Now, right Right before the detonation, he was distracted by some men doing work elsewhere and accidentally moved into the line of fire of the tamping iron. What resulted was this. A three foot long, six kilo rod was rocketed through the left side of Gage's face, going upwards through his lower jaw, passing behind his left eye, through the left side of his brain, and out through the top of his skull, through the frontal bone. Almost unbelievably, Gage didn't die. In fact, he was conscious and speaking within a few minutes of the accident and was even able to walk with some help. But the strangest part of the story happens after this because not only did Gage survive the accident, he lived another 12 years after this and his personality and his entire being drastically changed. Gage, before the accident, was considered hardworking, respectable, responsible, and a general standout guy. And afterwards, he became impulsive, disinhibited, and generally plain rude. He changed so drastically that his friends and acquaintances said he was no longer Gage. The main part of the brain that Gage had lost from this was the frontal lobe, which is an area of the brain associated with self-control and higher level thinking. However, despite having lost significant portions of his brain and having his personality changed, it was noted that Gage's memory and attention were still relatively intact. And the conclusion of this remarkable story is that years later, with the help of family, he seemed to make an almost complete recovery, while still missing a large chunk of his brain. But how little brain can we get away with? A remarkable study done in 2007 in The Lancet looked at the skull of a man who had almost no brain whatsoever. This man was 44 years old and initially doctors examined his brain because he had symptoms of some mild weakness in his left leg. Despite missing the vast majority of his brain matter we'd expect a human to have, this man was married with two children and worked as a civil servant and seemed entirely normal, proving once again that you literally do not need a brain to work for the government. Naturally, scientists wanted to test his intelligence and he was shown to have an IQ of 70. What caused this man to have next to no brain? Well, it was all to do with the buildup of intracranial fluid his body overproduced, brain juice. This accumulated fluid in his skull essentially prevented the development of brain material. So you can live losing some of your brain and perhaps having next to no brain at all, but what's most strange to me are the rare cases where people suffer brain damage 
damage can actually find their abilities and intelligence increased in some weird way. Psychiatrists have coined a term for this, acquired savant syndrome. This is somebody who, undergoing a brain injury, awakens with abilities that they didn't previously possess, and it's exceedingly rare. Currently, there are only 40 known cases worldwide. One of the most famous recent examples of this case was Jason Padgett. Padgett was born in 1970 in Anchorage, Alaska, and as a youth, he was a party-going, adrenaline-fueled junkie. He had spiked hair, was into muscle cars, and generally spent most of his days goofing around. But all that changed when, age 32, he was viciously attacked when leaving a karaoke bar after partying with some friends. He was hit at the back of the head and beaten up and robbed. When he finally came to and recovered and received medical attention, Padgett woke up feeling very strange. Suddenly, he began to see the world as a series of mathematical shapes and fractals. He began to draw some of the shapes he saw in his mind and found that they corresponded to pi and other high-level geometrical concepts in maths and physics. He then went on to college to learn the language to communicate his newfound genius and has since become a bit of a global phenomenon. These beautiful and elegant patterns, this must be how our brain constructs a moving image. So where does that leave us? Well, the brain is extremely extremely mysterious. Acquired savant syndrome is still not fully understood. How can a man function with almost no brain matter is just as hazy as understanding what in particular made Einstein's brain so special. So there's a lot of work to be done. Our brains must continue to study themselves and maybe one day we can find a way to make us all on par with Einstein or other geniuses throughout history. In the meantime though, it's a good idea to avoid brain injury as far as possible. A meta-analysis performed by the European Journal of Neurology shows that almost all impairments are purely negative. Right, that's your cue to get off YouTube and go use that wonderful brain of yours.